Hey there, folks. So tonight I got a very special treat. Uh, yet another piece of my uh, care package from Funny Playing. I've got... Yes, my friends, it's finally time for Funny Playing's Game Boy Advance SP Shell. Uh, now, I did already have this out of the packaging, and I didn't realize I put the tape back on here. That's nice. Okay. Uh, I did already have this out of the packaging, and I have already been... Uh, taking a look at it. Um, just some precursory glances, really. I haven't actually assembled it, but first thing you might be noticing is, yes, this is 100% clear. None of that frosted nonsense, nice and glossy. Um, personally, I really like the glossy clear stuff. I have been a fan of it uh, ever since Funny Playing introduced it with their, their first shells and like for the GBA stuff, and I've especially been a fan. Um, Cloud Game Store has been doing it for pretty much all of their other consoles. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, I can't get enough of it. But, of course, it does mean that uh, shells do show wear a little bit more quickly and a little bit easier, um, but it's, it's a price I am willing to pay, and... Um, before we continue, while I'm thinking about it, because it is going to scratch up my desk quite a bit, or it is going to show scratches quite easily, my desk mat's a mess, so let me get that cleaned up. And cheat code for you, a little bit of tape will clean, pick most of that right up, and then you can just fold it in half and uh, dispose of it. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and carry on here. Uh, so I don't know what the final retail version of this thing is going to look like. I don't even know if this is the final retail version, but I can go over what mine came with. Uh, so I've got clear shoulder buttons here. I've got a small uh, injection molded adapter for a USB-C mod. More on that later. I'll go ahead and set that aside for now. Uh, and in here there are also uh, the transparent hinge covers. Um, but that's about it. This shell doesn't come with too much more. Uh, it also came with a little accessory bag here full of all the screws, several light pipes. Uh, in fact, it came with four light pipes. You only need one, but there we are. Uh, looks like three square nuts and so on. Like I said, probably not the final version. Uh, in fact, I know one of the reasons why this shell took so long is because they had to make some customizations to... Oh, and it does have the hinge cover there. It was stuck in there. Um, they had to make some customizations to make it compatible with some of the SP kits that they want to make, which unfortunately were not finished at the time uh, when they sent this shell out, but I think they were finished like a week later, so... They're almost done, um, but unfortunately, I don't have one to check out today. Uh, so we'll be we'll be doing some we'll be getting creative with this. Um, also came with two Nintendo logos. I'm guessing they just you know grabbed a handful of stuff that this shell is supposed to come with and, and threw that in the bag for me. Um, not that it's a complaint, just you know pointing it out that this is probably not what they are going to be coming with in the end. So on to tonight's donor. We are going to be using this perfectly serviceable SP and we're just going to reshell it. Uh, now this is normally a step that I take off camera uh, and before I do videos but it's I, I've seen a few people making this mistake so I want to go over it in the video now maybe to hopefully prevent this sort of stuff going forward. Uh, but the thing I want to show is this AGS aging ROM. I'm going to run this on the console, make sure that I get solid passes across the board. Uh, that means that the console is working pretty much ideally electrically, which, like I said, I already did this off camera, so it's something that I expected. Uh, we have audio. Audio is working. Uh, and I can mess with the volume here to double check that. And then the last thing we're going to check back in the AGS aging ROM again is the key input test. I'm going to make sure all of my buttons work because going into this with a broken console, um, it's it, we're, we're not going to have a good time. 
Uh, I want to make sure that my console works perfectly before we go in so that in case anything stops working midway through, you know, we know it's probably something that I did rather than, you know, if we just go into this blind and then the console doesn't work, is it something I did? Did the console ever work? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to check, I'm not going to bother checking out the link port capabilities because quite frankly, I don't really care that much. And I'm not going to be checking out the headphone dongle um, output see it, to see if it works with the dongle because again, quite frankly, I just don't care that much. But we're going to make sure it charges and indeed it does. Um, that's not to say that not a common problem with these things. In fact, I have already opened this thing up and cleaned the power switch as well as replacing the battery. Um, I don't have a particularly good battery in here, but it's something that I had on my desk and you know, I, I already have the battery. I might as well use it. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and carry on, get this thing torn down. And because I know inevitably it's gonna come up in the comments, the ROM that I was using is called AGS Aging, and it is an internal tool used by Nintendo to run hardware diagnostics on these consoles, so it's not something that I can link to you. But I'm willing to bet if you Google search that, you'll probably be able to find it. There's a uh, site called The Cutting Room Floor, and they tend to host lots of stuff like that. Not saying you should check them out, but you know, just tangential information. All right, so six screws along the bottom. Once we've got the JIS, this is a JIS screw, not Phillips. Once we've got that JIS screw out, there are three Y shaped screws, um, commonly referred to as tri point, I believe it is, not tri wing, that's different. Uh, and then we'll flip the console over so that the bottom, so that I can lift the, the console off of the bottom. The reason we want to do that is because there's this little square nut in here that likes to fall out. Um, very easy to lose these. In this particular case, I've got several extras, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I have several SP consoles that are missing these because I've lost them. So I'd rather keep an eye on that if I can. Uh, additionally, these shoulder buttons and the power switch tend to tend to drop out of there. There's a little bit of solder in there. I don't know how that happened. Um, but easy enough to pull off. We'll set that aside for now. Next up, got to switch bits back to the JIS because there are three more JIS screws in the motherboard. These are short screws, not long ones. Uh, I know a lot of... A lot of people don't necessarily pay attention to the screw lengths, but there are two different lengths of screws in the SP. We don't want to get them mixed up because you will ruin your shell. Ta-da! Once you've got those three out, you can hinge the motherboard up. Be careful because there is a ribbon cable down here by the screen. I'm going to try and lift this up so I can release the bale and slide the ribbon cable out. Now, I guess it is pretty common that the ri uh, ribbons, membranes stick to the board when you lift it out, but you can just peel these up and I'm gonna keep them in the shell for now. Though realistically, I should probably set them aside. Yeah, I'll set them aside. Because otherwise, exactly what I just did is going to happen when I tilt this over. We'll lift the speaker out. It should come with the speaker cloth here. We'll keep that with the speaker. That's not necessary for operation, but it does help protect the speaker long term from um, debris incursion. And quite frankly, I think it just looks better, especially in a transparent shell. And then last, we have one long JIS screw underneath the ribbon cable. And this holds the hinge cover on. Once we've got that out, we've got this thing very nearly completely disassembled. Um, 
if I were installing this thing into a, a slate, I've already got it torn down enough. We don't need to continue anything here. Uh, but unfortunately, I do need the hinges because Funny Playing does not include them, which means I need to disassemble the top half of the screen. And since we're not putting a uh, backlight kit in it yet, uh, I do also want to go ahead and pull the screen out of there. Uh, so let's do that next. Let me get plastic spudger here. I'm grabbing new one, that's not new. That's not new either, but good enough. I like to use the plastic spudgers because if you use a metal tool on this, like a screwdriver, it is extremely easy to damage either the shell or the screw cover or both, and quite frankly that's just bad practice. Um, so I'm just gonna circle this around the periphery of the screw cover until I get a good foothold under it and I can pry it up. I gotta do this five times. Sometimes they rip. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. Thankfully, finally, you can get replacements of these in relatively decent quality. Um, but the OEM ones are still going to be best for OEM shells. I didn't do that one good enough. Now I've, I've had some people recommend a sewing needle to me for this, and yeah, that does work pretty well, but I just... I like sticking with the spudger, mostly because I don't have an abundance of sewing needles. Um, but it is what it is. And unfortunately... Okay, so the adhesive came out with the three small ones, but the adhesive stuck in with the two big ones. Uh, it's not going to be too big of a deal, because I'm not going to bother saving it. Uh, but on AGS-001 consoles, I've only ever seen five uh, short tri-point screws. On AGS-101 consoles, I've only ever seen five short GIS screws. But either way, not too big a deal. I'd rather replace the adhesive than try and salvage it from here, so I'm just going to poke my screwdriver through and lift the screw out, and you can see the adhesive came with it. I'll just peel that off so I can reuse the screw later. Ta-da! One more. All right, and now that that's apart, the top should lift off. I've seen sometimes uh, the screen will stick to the top. Uh, as long as you have the hinge cover off, it doesn't really matter too much. You could just pull it out and then pull that off. Uh, the reason it does that is sometimes there's a little bit of extra adhesive around the edges that just happens to hit these plastic uh, guides here. But it is what it is. Pull that out. If you want to get this logo out for reuse, because generally the OEM ones look a little bit better than the aftermarket ones, uh, I don't know if it's a printing quality issue, font issue, what, um, but... It is what it is, and I can see, just looking at these side by side, that the font is slightly different. Um, I guess, go ahead and skip ahead if you don't want me to point this out to you, but the R is totally different between the two. The little reserved logo at the end of Nintendo, the E in Nintendo is totally different. Uh, but the rest of... oh, and the T is a little bit smaller on the aftermarket one. But the rest of it's pretty good. Um... I don't think that's something I would notice in a vacuum, but side by side, it's pretty obvious to me. But anyway, 
We'll go ahead and set this stuff aside. Next up, we want to go ahead and extract the hinges. I've seen a lot of people just jam screwdrivers in there, and while that can work, that's a good way to break either your shell, the hinge, or both. I actually went ahead and designed a tool specifically for hinge extraction. Uh, I don't sell them, but the model is free on my printables profile, uh, but you just drop that bad boy in there, open the shell up, uh, and then we can use our screwdriver to push it out. And I am going to reposition my hands so that I don't stab myself. There we go, just clicks out, you see the hinge pops out just like that. And then once the hinge, once it's kind of like unlocked, then we can come in here with our screwdriver and just push it out. And we're not at risk of breaking anything. Let me grab that. Uh, there it is. And then we'll do the other side. The other side's quite a bit easier because we can come at it from the top. And trust me, this goes so much smoother if you just do it with the console open because then the keys are lined up and you don't have to do anything by force. And then the last thing, we can pull out that light pipe or we can just use the aftermarket one. Um, I'm going to use the aftermarket one for the sake of trying it out, but normally I like to use the OEM ones. All right. So I am going to start off by popping the hinges in here. Uh, so first thing we want to do is slide on the replacement hinge cover, which I gotta pull off this sprue. I have no idea if these are gonna be on the sprue or off the sprue, but I've also heard rumblings of new aftermarket hinges coming. I can't get that slid all the way on. I wonder if it's a matter of trimming off this flashing here. Maybe it'll pop together when we try and assemble it. Uh, but anyway, the hinges are directional. You notice one of them has a little bit of a, one of them has black clips, one of them has white clips. The white clips go on the right and the black clips go on the left side and we have to have the SP open when we insert them. Uh, if you just look in through the side, you can see two sets of keyways. You just wanna make sure that the keyways are lined up, which is when the thing is open. And then we can just slide that in there. Usually we can just slide that in there. There it goes. And then we'll do the other side. Just trimming that little bit of flashing off from the sprue. And then same thing while it's open. Drop that in. And cha-da! Easy peasy, nice. Clicky, snappy, responsive, feels like OEM because it's using OEM hinges. We can go ahead and drop this screen in there. It's nice and loose, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Seems to seems to hold its own. Oh, while I have this before I reassemble it, I might as well give it a good cleaning because it's much easier to get at. This is also a good opportunity to replace the lens if you want to, but um, we, I, I will actually throw a backlight kit in this thing, uh, but I want to do the uh, regular full assembly first, and then I'll double dip with the backlight kit. 
All right. And then, might as well use the new screws. With SPs, I almost always recommend using your OEM screws and saving them. But let's see what Funny Playing has to offer, because these are probably going to be a little bit better. Let me sort these. So right now I'm just sorting between long and short screws. Hopefully they just gave us all the same screw type, but let's find out. We've got crosshead, 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 crossheads, crosshead, 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 and crosshead. Nice. So we're using the short screws on the top half, just like OEM. And because we're threading into plastic here, uh, all I'm doing is tightening them all the way down, bottoming, bottoming them out, and then backing them up an eighth of a turn, uh, just because it, it's plastic, you know? You don't want to thread it too tight or you risk cracking it, uh, and we don't want to do that. Uh, it's going to be plenty tight as is. Thread that in there. Put that hinge cover on. And now, I guess, let me go ahead and sort the long screws and see if we have any Y screws. I don't expect us to, but. We'll just double check. Alright, so yeah, these are all the same as well. We'll go ahead and use a long screw for the hinge cover. Fairly certain that's unchanged from stock. And same thing, bottom it out and then back it up an eighth of turn. And that's it. Easy peasy. Go ahead and drop our light pipe in. And now we need some buttons. I don't want to reuse these because they're, quite frankly, kind of gross. And I don't want to have to stop the video to clean them. So let's see what I've got. Ugh. I never ordered buttons. What I'd like to use... Maybe I will stop the video just to pull them out. I'd like to use these custom resin buttons that one of my buds made for me, so... Let me, let me pause and grab these. Alright, here we go. So I'm fairly certain there was a brightness button with these button sets too, um, but since I installed them in a slate, I have no idea what I did with that brightness button. So we're going to use an unmatched button. Uh, but these red buttons were actually made by a um, gentleman goes by the name of Neo. They are resin cast and they are fantastic. 
uh, but uh, well, there is no but. They're they're fantastic. Um, I think that's it. The brightness button I'm using is actually a custom one-off from a, a set that Retro CNC made uh, that I also installed in a slate. Hence the uh, random brightness button I had laying around. Get that ribbon cable connected. I'm sorry I kind of lost through that. I am on autopilot here. I'm going to use three short screws on the motherboard. I will cover getting that ribbon cable connected again if you want to see me do it. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, rewind, rewind the video and watch it in slow-mo. You have that option available to you. I'm going to make sure I don't over-tighten these. In theory, it shouldn't be possible, but... Just double check. It is very possible to over tighten those, so don't do that. I did it so you don't have to. That's unfortunate. But it is what it is. Alright. What next? We need to install this shielding here and we are short screws or are we? No, we can use long screws for this I hope. We'll find out I don't know that it comes with a battery cover screw. That's annoying for this purpose, but all right, yeah, that is definitely a different thread pitch. I can deal with that, but what are the chances it's M2? Slim to none. That is going to be M1.6, I bet. which I do not have any screws that are suitable. Let's get these shoulder buttons installed. These are made from a different plastic it feels like, uh, which is not as transparent as the rest of the plastics, but still transparent. These springs are directional. They do only fit in one shoulder button. Uh, one, one side, that is. And oh, they sent extra springs. I noticed Extreme Rate did that too. Maybe it's just to make their life easier, so in case in case you're of the Butterfingers type and you grab the spring and, and uh, launch it into space, you know, they don't have to they don't have to deal with the customer support of trying to send you another one. You just have extras already. 
Right. Do I have a black one? That would look better. I don't, but I do have dark gray. In there, get that switched off, get that random screw out of there. Put the long screws in each of the corners. And it does not appear possible to over tighten these ones to the point where you nub them, thankfully. Oh, yeah, it is. I didn't do that one, but it came very close. It's transparent, so uh, you can just look and see what I'm doing through the side. Very careful when putting these screws in. It's very easy to over tighten them. That one should be pretty easy. Even if we over tighten that one, you wouldn't see the nub because it's hidden by the hinge. And then this last one. Right there, just like that. Uh, oh, let's pop battery in this bad boy. I like these batteries a lot better than these. Uh, I saw these floating around on uh, AliExpress a while back, and um, Retro Game Repair Shop had actually picked up a few and sent them to me for testing and they're alright but they're wildly inconsistent as far as battery uh, capacity goes. Um, I don't remember offhand, I'll have to check my notes, uh, but if I recall correctly it's anywhere from like 600 to 800 milliamps, milliamp hours of capacity which for brand new batteries, that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, and then there were just a couple that were straight DOA. Like that, I don't like them. These, on the other hand, they're not super high capacity. I don't remember what I measured them at. I don't think it was 850 milliamp hours. Uh, but they were consistent and decent, and for the price, pretty hard to beat. Um, I still don't have a battery cover screw, so... I'm going to use this battery cover for now because the alternative is pulling this screw out and I just kind of don't want to do that. But, huh? Huh? Let's put a game in here, how about? Kill my overhead lights. Uh, all of them, actually. Might be a little bit easier to see this screen. There we go. I'm going to pull open the tester just so I can test all my buttons. 
Uh, now this isn't necessarily a um, comment on the shell or anything like that because these are all aftermarket buttons, but they do all work perfectly fine and they're all perfectly usable, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I suppose it would be a bigger problem if it did come with buttons and those buttons didn't work, but it seems fine here. Oh, I totally forgot the logo. Let's drop that in there. How about for the emblem? If you want to reuse your original emblem, there is a little pinhole in the housing right there. If you take a plastic tool, not a metal one, a plastic tool, uh, you can kind of poke that through and poke the emblem up and then peel it off. If you use a metal tool, you will scratch the back of the, the uh, holographic coating on there and it will be visible from the outside. You don't want to do that. Use plastic, trust me, it'll work better. Anyway. The light pipes aren't that great, but I suppose it doesn't matter too much because the entire shell is transparent. Let me plug this in so you can see what the other one looks like. I mean, it's serving the purpose. It's good enough. I think OEM is better though. Probably reuse your existing ones instead of the aftermarket ones. Um, I guess I'll boot up a game real quick. Just run around for a minute. I don't expect to really have anything else to say. I mean, it's it's a GBASP shell. It feels like a GBASP shell. Um, certainly acting like a GBASP shell. I'm pretty happy with it. I've got no strong feelings one way or the other as far as um, the feel goes. It feels like it should. I do have a couple comments like the screw spacing for these top shell for the top half of the screen top half of the shell on the screen there we go uh, it is higher up than on a regular SP if I grab this you can see the spacing is different uh, so you can't really mix and match uh, I know all of the other aftermarket shells match this spacing so if you want to mix and match the top half of Funny Playing shells, you're going to have a bad time. You'll have to stick with Funny Playing for that. Um, what an awful matchup. I'm not even going to... Not even going to continue that. Um, about to get my, my butt handed to me. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with it. I, I can say with a little bit more certainty now that I have it all assembled that this is not the final version uh, because notably it did not come with a battery cover screw. I don't know if they intend you to salvage your OEM screw and use that, which is possible, but it's kind of a pain in the butt because there is a circlip on there and getting that circlip off can be really difficult without the correct tools. In fact, I don't even have the proper tools to remove a circlip. I will sit here with tweezers trying to pry that thing off and these tweezers aren't even sharp enough to do that. Uh, I'd have to get my nice titanium ones and I don't really want to do that with my expensive titanium tweezers. Um, not to mention this particular screw is kind of nasty and I wouldn't want to reuse it. Uh, so that's something I'd like to see them fix when they finally start s selling this thing. Uh, another thing is there aren't any um, screw covers. You don't. I don't necessarily think it needs them, but I can't reuse any of my screw covers for this because the holes themselves are a different size. Like I can't the, the small ones. I can't even fit the small one in there because it's a different size, uh, and all five of them are the same different size. So I don't have any screw covers. I can't use them if I wanted to. I can't reuse them. Um, but 
other than that, like it, it genuinely feels, feels pretty good. Uh, as far as, yeah, I suppose it could use the, the screw covers. One of the things that the screw covers do on an OEM SP, if you look at this from the side, you can see the, the screen is resting on those top screw covers. These ones are rounded over and they prevent the screen from making contact with the rest of, they prevent this plastic from rubbing on this plastic really. Uh, so if you've ever seen SPs that are well loved, someone's carried around in their pocket per se, uh, which this one is not a great example of, uh, but you can see it's starting here a little bit. The, the plastic rubs on the plastic and then the paint comes off. The same thing will happen here, uh, and I think it'll happen even quicker without those screw covers, but I can't really take points off, you know, if if I was keeping score. I couldn't really take points off because, like I said, this is a pre-release version, and it, quite frankly, just might come with them, and I just didn't get them yet because they aren't ready. Um, but it is something I'd like to see going forward. Uh, otherwise, the shell itself feels great. Uh, that You might not hear the hinges clicking, but that SP didn't click beforehand. Like, this one has a little bit of a click, but not all SPs do. This one's nice and quiet. And I don't think I have a better... Well, that one's a little bit noisier, but not the best example. Uh, how about this thing? Yeah. See, that one's nice and clicky. I bet if I were to use these hinges in here, it would be nice and clicky, but I don't really want to pull this thing apart, and quite frankly, I'm in the middle of some important testing with this thing. Um, really, I just want to run the battery down and charge it up again and see exactly at what rate it charges, but anyway. Moving on. So, this shell, yeah. You know, I'm... I, I, I like it. I am really stoked for these things. Uh, hopefully they turn out quite a bit better than the transparent shells that came out that I, I was so stoked for. Um, brief history of SP shells. In the SP aftermarket, we have never had any good shells. It's just, it hasn't happened. Uh, it's one of the biggest reasons why I set about making my slate is because I was very displeased with the quality of all of the available shells for SPs and yeah, I mean the hinge is neat, but I don't really care for it that much, so that's why I went with that form factor. But I I, I just it wasn't it wasn't there. They felt cheap. Uh the materials were too thin and flexible. Um the paint was god awful. The the quality of the molding sucked. Uh and then these transparent ones came along and it was actually really great looking. Uh, but as it turns out, they kind of suck too because they were very prone to cracking. Um, now, that is the early release versions of the transparent shells. I have been told that the cracking has been fixed. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have any of the newer shells. All I have are the older ones and all of mine have cracked in some way. You can see this battery cover here has cracked. And uh, I know some people will start getting on my case and say, well, yeah, that's because your battery mod is too big and it doesn't fit. And it's like, well, yeah, but I had this battery in there. So it's not even that. It's just that these things are brittle and they crack. And like, maybe the new ones are better, fine, but the molding is still, it, it's not quite there. Like, it's just a little bit too floppy for my tastes. And, um... I don't know, like, the trust is gone, if you know what I mean. Like, they can tell me all day that the mold, or the, the plastic formula has been improved, and they're better now, but I just, I still don't trust them, you know? Um, it's, it's hard to earn that trust back once you, once that trust has been lost. Um, this, however, they haven't lost my trust yet. It feels fine, it doesn't feel like it's gonna crack, but then again, neither did the other ones. 
So uh, I guess only time will tell. Uh, but otherwise, I'm I'm really pleased with this. I think they've still got a little little ways to go. Like if they want to keep this glossy texture, which I really hope they do, uh, there are still some improvements that they probably want to make. Like on the inside of the uh, hinge area, you can see on the inside of the shell, it is still quite coarse looking, so it's not exactly transparent there. It doesn't have to be, it's not a problem, but you know, if you're looking for problems, you'll find them. Also, all of the e ejection pins are highly visible on this thing. The speaker holes are a little inconsistent, but don't get me wrong, they're still by far the best I've seen on an aftermarket SP housing. Uh, in fact, I... <laughs> let, me, let me check this one before I say something. Okay. So this is one of the better ones where you have all of the outside holes are the one millimeter size and then the four inside holes are the 1.2 millimeter size. That's how it's supposed to look and that's not how most of them look. <laughs> um, Funny Playing did pretty good, but you could see right here on this top hole, there's a little bit of a def... Uh, well, top right middle hole, uh, there is a little bit of a defect with the molding. Um, I don't know if that was just like a plastic flow issue and it just so happened to be in this shell and they just so happened to send this shell to me. Uh, but it is a little bit concerning. Additionally, there are some lines going up and down uh, the, the, the speaker holes that I don't see on any of the older shells, but it also could be that because this is the glossy texture, it's a little bit more evident. Um, I do know that the glossy texture will show wear and any other defects way better than, than the uh, matte texture. It's... The whole reason that, I know this is aftermarket, but bear with me, it's the whole reason that Nintendo goes with glossy plastics in the first, or glossy, goes with matte plastics in the first place for all of their consoles. That's a bad example, I know, but I don't have any consoles with OEM shells within reach. Um, I mean, even SPs, they're matte, but they're painted, so not the best example. Uh, there is one glossy SP from Nintendo, and that is the Rayquaza Limited Edition, that green one with the Pokemon on it. Um, but beyond that, I think that's like the only glossy console that Nintendo has ever put out. Um, otherwise, they they stick with matte just because it does show it does not show wear nearly as quickly or easily, and when it does. It doesn't look nearly as severe, um, but quite frankly, I can't speak for everyone here, but I can certainly speak for myself, and I don't use these things like I used to, so wear is not a concern to me. It is, for the most part, going to live on my desk and very occasionally make appearances outside of my home. Very, very seldomly. So I don't think that's an issue for me. Uh, but it is worth considering if you are the type who actually plays your consoles. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm sitting here going, oh yeah, I don't, I don't play my consoles, that's for nerds. Uh, but I do actually genuinely play this one, um, hence most of the wear on the paint. But this is, of course, I, I play the one that I designed bespoke for myself, so... Um, but still not as much as I want to. But overall, I'm very, very pleased with this thing. It, uh, I'm very hopeful for where they go. I, they've been working on this thing for over a year. I've known about this thing for over a year. I've seen some of their earlier prototypes, and I've known, like, the, the screw spacing has gonna... I've known the screw spacing is gonna be like this pretty much since the inception of this thing. And the whole point, oh, what'd I do with it? There it is. The whole point is because they want to use their ITA screen kits in these housings, and they simply had to move the screw post just to fit this LCD because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a big boy. 
Uh, it's a big LCD. Uh, so they had to space those out a little bit more just to fit this thing. And that is the intended kit for this thing. But the OEM screen fits. You should be able to use any kit you want. All of them should already fit. Uh, the only exception is on the back here. I don't see that it's trimmed. We'll check this out in a separate video because this one's already getting pretty long. Uh, but we'll check out the fitment of other IPS kits in this thing later and see how that goes. Uh, but otherwise, I think that's all I've got for now. Um, probably not going to be anything linked in the description of this video. I have no idea when it's going to go up in the grand scheme of things, but right now as of filming this there is no place to get these there's no other place with information as far as i can tell maybe funny playing has posted a few teasers on their uh, instagram uh, or their blog on their website but otherwise these aren't available yet this was sent to me to check out and to give them some feedback and indeed i do have some feedback uh, and not just in the form of this video i will communicate that to them separately but you know what I'm, I'm 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 pleased with this um anyway that's all i've got big shout out to retro game repair shop for sending me uh some of the stuff i used here this shell did come direct from funny playing uh but i whined to them because i for the first time since i've been making videos i ran out of donor consoles uh, so they let me purchase a few from their stash and probably shouldn't say that much because um, their stash is, is not public. It's it's their own personal stash because they've got the bug just as bad as me uh, in that they like modding consoles for their own personal enjoyment. I would say use, but like me, I'm sure they don't get much use. Um, but... The owner of the store was certainly nice enough to let me purchase a few of his stash, and I've got more on the way from auctions and lots that I'm bidding on. But SPs, man, they got so expensive, and I think that's partially my own fault, but I'm, I'm still grumpy about it. Um, but anyway, Retro Game Repair Shop usually sends me a lot of this stuff, uh, so I want to give them a huge shout-out. Uh, but huge shout-out to Funny Playing for sending me this stuff. Uh, and... I'll go ahead and throw a link to Neo's Instagram. Uh, if he has a web store, I'll go ahead and link to that too. I genuinely have no idea. Um, at the time he sent me this stuff, he didn't, but I don't know if he does now. Uh, but he sent me the buttons and they look and feel fantastic. They're just resin casts, but you can't get them in that color, you know? It's, it's neat. And uh, I, I'll throw a link to Retro CNC's Instagram or Twitter or something. Uh, he's got a web shop. Uh, I don't know that he's selling these knurled buttons, though. That's a, That was a one-off for me and, and a few of his close friends. Um, yeah. It's good stuff. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I'm not done shooting videos for the night, though, uh, because I do want to go ahead and review the USB-C portion of this, so I will be shooting another video uh, and that'll probably be linked down in the description. Um, and I've got my own ITA kit we're going to throw in this thing and, and uh, you know, see how that works out. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.